What's up guys, it's Nick here at Fantasy Forge Miniatures and today I'm going to be showing you part two of how to build a miniature house, which is all about texturing. Alright guys, so in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to take the structure we built in the last video and add in all this great texture and character. Now this video will be a bit longer because we're going to be making doors and planks and beams and stonework and shingles. It's going to be a lot, but I promise there's going to be a lot of tips, tricks, techniques and instructions and how to get all of those great textures. So let's get crafting. All right, so we're gonna start off by milling a bunch of pieces of XBF foam into all of our beams and our planks that we're gonna use for um, our build. So here I'm just uh, making one edge flush of my XBF foam, and now I'm setting the guide to about uh, a centimeter and a little bit uh, to start making our beams. Now these beams are gonna be used to cover up the corners uh, and kind of the seams of the walls that we built in our last video. Um, so here I'm just creating square beams um, at one and a little bit of centimeters there. And there you have it, that's what we're going to be using. So we're going to want to make uh, a couple of these um, to cover all of the corners that we're going to want to have. So once we have those, we're going to start making planks. Now I'm bringing in the guide to about a centimeter and we're going to create um, uh, one plank that we're going to then mill down into smaller planks. So as you can see here, cut one piece at a centimeter, bring in the guide to maybe one, maybe two millimeters, and then we're just gonna start milling through all these planks and creating nice thin strips that we're gonna apply to our build. So using that one piece, we're gonna wanna make a lot of them because there is going to be a lot of planks. So now that we have them all milled out, we're gonna take our beams and now we're gonna cut out the center of it. Now you're gonna wanna be careful, don't cut all the way through, but what we're doing is cutting out um, a cord to, to make an L beam. Um, so we're gonna rotate it over, spin it around, and do the exact same thing. Don't cut all the way through, but we're actually gonna cut out uh, the center of it so that it's gonna wrap around or seems really nice. So you can pop out that metal piece and you're not going to want to throw that away. Um, it's the perfect size that we're going to want to use um, for some more beams, but you can see there we've got a nice L beam created. Now you're going to want to do this to all of those beams in the exact same way. You're just going to make sure that you don't cut all the way through and just save that center core piece. All right, now that we have all of our L pieces cut, our planks milled, and our saved cores, we're gonna start texturing. So I'm using a hot wire foam cutter with the wand extension, and I'm just gonna be dragging that across the foam um, at a nice light heat uh, to create some good wood texture. Now I have a whole video on how to do uh, different kinds of texturing, so you can check that out if you'd like, a uh, more in-depth look into texturing. But for now, I'm gonna use the hot wire foam cutter for this build. So here, um, I'm just going to be putting that texture all over all of the beams, um, just like that. I'm using the tip just to create some nice knots. And there you can see we've got a completed beam. Now you're gonna wanna do this for uh, all of the beams. Um, so this is gonna be the time consuming part is adding all of this, but once uh, they're done, it starts to move really quickly. So now we're moving on to our planks and we're doing it in the exact same way. It's a little bit easier if you lay them down um, flat on a surface and then just drag the tip across um, and then just adding in those knot holes. So we're going to need a lot of them. So this is going to be uh, where a bulk of the time is going to go is into texturing all of these pieces. And so once you've done that, we're going to start texturing uh, the cores that we've saved. Um, in the exact same way. So there's gonna be a lot of wood texturing here, um, but once they're all done, we'll be ready to roll. So now we're gonna take our build, 
and um, we're gonna start adding in those L-shaped beams onto the corner. So this is a way for us to hide uh, the seams of our walls so that you can't see where we were gluing them together. So I'm just marking it out with my knife here. Um, I'm gonna drop it down and then just cut those where I marked it and lay some glue down on that and then we're just going to place it right over that seam there and then just give it a bit of a squeeze and a tug and you can make sure that stays flush by just keeping the whole build uh, right on the ground. So we're going to continue to do this for all of the corners on this build. We're just going to be marking with a knife, cutting, and then gluing those right on the corners. Once all the beams are in place, it's time to make a door. So with a spare piece of SBS foam, FBF, XBS foam, we're going to create a door. So um, I'm just marking it out the height that I would like it, which is about an inch and a half, which is what I find is a good size for a door. And then I'm going to cut it by an inch. So inch and a quarter, or sorry, inch and a half by one inch. Um, and I find that gives a good door. And you can just grab a miniature there just to see if the reference is good. So now I'm gonna start texturing the door same way as I did all the planks and all the wood. Um, we're just gonna start laying in some thicker lines to show uh, the different beams um, and then just going over lightly with uh, some more wood texture there. So there we have the door and now we're gonna make the um, the brackets that hold the door in place. So with um, a similar thickness or even thinner uh, piece, I'm just gonna cut it at an inch wide and then I'm gonna cut the small little strips that are going to be the brackets. So now I'm just cutting um, those into a point for some decorative piece. You can make these however you want, like you know, just pure triangles or just straight squares, whatever you like. So you just grab a ball tool like that and what I'm going to do is just push right into them uh, to be uh, the rivets. So this is a great way to just kind of um, give the impression that these things are kind of like bolting the door together. <clears throat> so now I'm just hot gluing those into place on the door, one on the top, one on the bottom. This one's a pretty simple, I want to make this house kind of like a, a little bit of a hovel so this door isn't uh, crazy fancy. Um, but you can see there those uh, rivets look really good door starting to come together. So now to build the handle of this door what I'm gonna do is just cut off some uh, 10 gauge aluminum wire and I'm just gonna wrap it around that tool um, to start making kind of like a, a latch for the door uh, kind of like a door handle. So I'm just creating um, a loop there you can see and what I'm gonna do is take the pliers and cut it right where the two wires overlap. Now I'm gonna cut them down together and you can see there that now drops apart and makes a perfect circle. So that is gonna be our door hanger. Next, um, I'm just gonna bend uh, the last piece around uh, that tool and then just cut it off to make a U piece which is gonna connect that handle uh, into the door, as you can see there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and push that into the door um, and it will hold itself there but when we glue it on, it'll be really secure. So you can just rotate it around so it hides that seam. And now we have a great looking door. Boom. All right, so now you're gonna want to uh, see where you would like to position your door. Um, I kinda wanted mine there. And what I actually do is just push in that door handle to just uh, hold it in place, see if I like it. Um, I do, so then we're just gonna hot glue it and place it in place. Now we're going to start framing in the door. So we're going to take some of our planks that we made and just cut them to the height of the wall and we're going to start uh, building the frame around our door. So we're just hot gluing that plank there, one on each side of the door. creating a cross beam here um, in the same way just taking a plank marking it with a knife and then 
cutting and gluing that right above the door. Now I like to leave a little bit of a gap around the whole door um, just to give it some room to move, you know, as a door would. And now you can put the roof on at any time just to see what it looks like. But now we're on to stonework. So you can see here I've got a bunch of little XBF bricks that I've made. I'm going to make a different video to show how I made them. Um, but for now they're just um, one centimeter by two centimeter styrofoam blocks textured to look like stone. So here I'm going to cut all of these bricks in half because I don't want them sticking out the full centimeter um, out of my build. So there we go. We got them all cut in half. And now I'm just going to start gluing them along the base of the house. Um, I like to think that there's um, a little bit of a stone foundation that everything's built off of for the house. Um, so I'm not doing it all the way up because I don't want this to be a stone house, um, but just going to do um, a two brick high uh, kind of skirt around the outside of the house. So you can just see, you can stagger them by cutting them however you'd like to, however you like to do your stonework. Um, I like to make them look a little bit uneven and maybe some gaps to kind of give that bit of texture to the build. So you can see there, um, we started to get the stonework around. Now on the back side, what I wanted to do is actually uh, make a kind of like a chimney area. So I'm gonna have the bricks actually go um, from floor to ceiling. Um, I'm just putting in a plank there to kind of wall in the one area where the, where the chimney will go. And there you have it, stonework in place. Now I'm just throwing in a couple small little stone pieces under the door uh, to give it kind of maybe like a little bit of a step there. And so there we go, our stonework is in place. Now it's time for windows. So we're gonna start framing in the windows, very similar to your door. Um, and we're gonna do top, bottom, and sides, and then shutters. So there, I'm just cutting one of the planks in uh, to size, and then we're just gonna hot glue it right along uh, the stonework. And then we're gonna do one um, right uh, on the ceiling line, just like that. And we're gonna take another piece to do the cross beams. Um, all the while, we just kind of mark with the knife and make the cuts from that. Then we're gonna glue those side windows in place. Side planking, and in the house. Now you're gonna to wanna to get more of a fine-tuned X-Acto knife, because the other one's a little bit big. And we're just gonna cut, um, cut the window out from what we've made. Now this is a lot easier to do it um, once you've got the frame in place and then you're just cutting along the lines that you already made and that way it's nice and flush. So you just pop that piece out and now we have a window. Now for accents I like to just take um, you know some scrap pieces of the wood and I just cut them to size glue along the one edge and then just kind of uh, glue them on at an angle so they they look like shutters. So you can see there they stick out a little bit adds a little bit of character. Do, 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 do. What a lovely house. All right, so now you can add in some more planks along it. You can have a lot of freedom with this, you know, put some angle beams and whatever you'd like, but um, I'm just doing this because we're going to be adding in all of the windows in the exact same way. You can add as many as you like, wherever you'd like. Um, you know, maybe they're bigger, smaller, they got designer shades, however you like to do it. Um, this is kind of how I do mine. So you can see there, just cutting them out all the way, throwing on some shutters, and now we've got a bunch of nice looking windows. So now it's time to do the interior of the house. So I like to uh, line up uh, interior planks with exterior planks so they look like they're, you know, kind of going right through. Um, and the exact same way we did the outside windows, we're going to do the inside windows minus the shutters. So we're just lining those up and making them flush with the hole that we've already cut. Um, and again, lining up those beams so that, uh, you know, interior and exterior match. Because, you know, um, sometimes that can happen when the interior looks, all, you know, it doesn't line up with the outside and it doesn't look right. So there we go. Um, now for interior corners, we're going to do exactly the same as we did on the outside. Um, we're just going to mark that piece and we're just going to hide that seam with one of our L beams there. And then we're going to put that window in place. Now you're going to want to make another door uh, for the inside. And you're going to want to make it in the exact same ways we did before. Creating wood texture, creating rivets, create another handle. Um, and one thing for this is you're going to want to keep in mind is which way the brackets are going. Because you might have an impossible door. So once you got it there, 
you're just gonna glue that door into place right where you created that nice frame. Make sure it lines up. And there we go. All right, so now we're gonna be starting to create the fireplace. So I'm gonna start gluing these together um, without cutting them uh, into uh, a bit of a platform that's gonna act as the hearth of the fireplace. So again, just cutting them so that they are nicely staggered and you get a nice stonework pattern. Now I'm gonna build up the walls on each side uh, to start to give the fireplace kind of like um, an area where the fire is going to be lit. I'm creating the mantle now, which is gonna be just stone blocks uh, glued together. Um, I'm, and then I'm gonna be adding um, kind of like a plank top to it. You can see there, it starts to look good in, uh, in the house. So now I'm just gonna be creating the little bit of a chimney that's gonna be on it that you can see. Um, and then here adding in the wood, wooden mantle top. So there we go. Um, you can see, set that in place, um, see where you want to position, it looks good. Uh, and then just gluing on the sides and bottom into place. And now our interior is starting to look really good. Now there's one thing I forgot and it's the flooring. So um, I left it in here to show you that um, you know, a build is never permanent. You can always make changes and uh, I forget things too. So what I did was just pop the floor out there, pick off the glue, and then I ran it through my Proxon, uh, the same width as the planks, uh, and just kind of pared it down so that when I add the planks, it's gonna be the same height. So here, well, we're just gonna take um, some of those planks that we made and just start laying in the floor work. Now here, I'm just trying to like stagger each piece so that, um, you know, there's, there isn't a bunch of lines that line up together and it looks kind of weird. So I'm trying to get like a nice um, flooring plank look with staggering lengths. Um, and there we go. So we're just gonna keep doing that all the way along. You can leave some cracks in there too, uh, however you'd like to make your floor look a little bit weathered. So there we have it. Our bottom is now uh, created and uh, I think it turned out really well. So we just pop it back in, hot glue it back in place and no harm, no foul. There we go, our interior is looking great. So next, we're gonna be adding in some planks to the top, uh, just to kind of clean up uh, the look of it and make it look really nice once the roof is removed. So we're just gonna be hot gluing uh, those same beams into place, uh, cutting 45 degree angles so that they all interlock nicely and we're gonna do that all the way along the top of our build. So once that's glued in place, the bottom half of our building is looking really good. And with the roof on, it looks even better. So now we're gonna start doing the gables of the roof. So here, I'm just cutting some uh, planks uh, to length along the roof on the bottom there. And I leave a little bit of a lip so that it actually uh, catches on the bottom part of the build so that it lines up really nicely and kind of covers up any minor gaps that might be there. So now I'm just cutting um, you know, a triangulated point to the top of one of the beams and that's gonna be uh, one of our uh, roof beams there. You can see just cutting it into place and then gluing it in place as well. So now those core uh, pieces that we've textured are going to act as kind of like uh, the trusses that stick out um, from the roof. So you can see there, I'm just kind of marking how far I want them to stick out. I'm going to cut them to size and then just texture the end uh, that's going to be facing outwards. And then I'm just gonna glue them uh, into place along the roof. Um, since this is a smaller house, I'm only gonna be doing uh, two of them per side there. And so it's gonna add a lot of, of character there. So now for our dormer, uh, I'm gonna be taking those same L-shaped beams. I'm gonna be cutting them on an angle so that they can fit uh, inside there and um, follow the roof line. So just doing two of those. And in the same way that we do the windows, we're gonna do another window in the dormer here and just so go ahead and add some shutters and there we go, our dormer's looking great. So we're gonna do uh, exactly what we did on that first gable to all of the other gables. And now we're gonna start building in some supports for that overhang. So we're gonna take some more of those 
uh, core pieces that we got from our L-beams. We're going to cut them to size on uh, how far we want uh, the supports to come out of the overhang. I, I like to cut them at a bit of an angle to add some interest. We're going to texture the ends of those and then create little uh, supporting beams there. So we're going to do that for all three of those supports there. And now our house has a nice little support for that overhang. It adds a lot of character when you add in, you know, those little features. So our house is looking really good. Now it's time to get on to the roof, which can be a bit of the time consuming piece. But look at that interior, it's looking great. All right, so you don't have to do this uh, part, but um, I'm throwing it in here in case you want to. What I'm doing here is adding some wood texture to the roof. Now, I know you're like, hey, we're gonna cover it up in shingles, you don't have to do that. But what I like to do is actually have some shingles missing, um, which would expose the, you know, the planking underneath. So what I'm doing here is just that, um, I'm using the same technique we use to texture the wood and just texturing the entire roof. So again, you don't have to do this if you're just gonna cover the entire thing in shingles. I like to, um, you know, just leave some holes and adds a lot of character. So there we go, our roof is in place. Um, now what I like to do uh, before I start shingling to make sure the house is secure is actually grab some magnets and what I'm gonna do is just nicely cut and, and melt some holes for the magnets to go, um, you know, hidden underneath the planks. And what it's gonna do is uh, keep the roof nicely in place. So you can see there, I'm doing it to all, uh, you know, the major corners. And then on the roof, I'm doing the exact same thing right above where they would attach. I'm just hot gluing in uh, some more magnets. And once you do that to all those corners, it's going to snap right into place. And now you can actually pick up the entire build by the roof. Um, so now we're gonna move right into uh, shingling. So what I'm doing is cutting uh, a two centimeter block. And now I'm going to texture the one edge. I actually have a whole other video on this, um, so I'm going to be a little bit brief uh, explaining it here. So we're creating one of the edge uh, edges of the shingle strips, and then we're going to texture the other side, adding in some um, notches there. And now we're setting it again, uh, our proxon, to a very thin um, amount. And we're just going to cut off that texture piece that we just did there. And you can see now we have a strip of shingles. And so rinse and repeat with this until you have a lot. We're gonna need a lot of them for this way. So once you have those strips, um, you can leave it at that if you'd like, but what I like to do here is just cut them into individual shingles. Now I know this adds a lot more time to the build, but I find that it adds so much more character. So you can see here, um, we're just taking all the shingles and we're just literally just hot gluing them into place into uh, you know kind of rows like that. Um, so I like to stagger them a bit. Sometimes I like to leave um, gaps or spaces or holes that kind of show uh, the planking of the roof underneath. Now, before we do the backside of the house, what I'm doing here is actually gonna be building a chimney for um, our fireplace. So here I'm just doing a, a crisscrossing um, block stack to build the roof, um, staggering them like that and we're just gonna create a uh, nice amount of chimney. Now we're gonna create a square top that's gonna act as kind of the uh, rim of the chimney. We're gonna cut out a center hole for the smoke, escape, and then we're just using the wood burner tool to create grout lines um, for you know, uh, the stone that would be on top. Taking some tin foil, adding a little bit of stone texture to that piece, and then we're gonna hot glue it right into place and make sure that's lined up and square on the bottom. Now that we want this chimney to sit on the roof, we're going to have to cut an angle out of it so that um, it's pointing directly up when we attach it to the roof. So you can go ahead and just kind of guesstimate um, what that angle would be and go from there, cut off more if you need to, and then just hot glue it into place. I kind of like the way this one is a little bit wonky because um, it matches the rest of the house. So now we can just continue shingling, leaving out some shingles wherever you'd like to, to add some character. And you can see here, we're really starting to get a cute house look. So now I'm swapping out the hot wire foam cutter wand extension for the tension wire there. And what I'm gonna do is just cut a very small amount right off the top of the 
roof, so the peak there. We're just going to flatten it out a bit because we're going to start adding some beams. So you can do that to all of the ridges, even the dormer there, um, and just kind of flatten them out a bit um, so that this beam here that we're going to be adding sits nice and flush with the roof. So this piece, you're going to have to create a new one exact same way we've been doing all of our beams. Um, you can make it a little bit bigger if you want that top piece um, to have a little bit more weight. We're just going to texture the ends of the piece there, and then we're just going to hot glue it right along that flat ridge that we created. Now you can do this for all of the other ridges in the exact same way, using the exact same piece of wood. And uh, always texturing our ends um, that are sticking out so they look good. Put one on the dormer. Now for final touches, I'm using a, um, a wood burning tool. Um, I'm setting it to the lowest setting and now I'm gonna just start going in and melting away some areas to add in uh, some uh, you know, small brick texturing as if the stucco has uh, broken away and now you can see the stone underneath. So you can see here that I'm just creating kind of a bit of stacked stone and then cracked stucco on top. Now you can add cracks in all over the place uh, just for some added detail um, and they're really gonna start to show when we start painting this thing. But you can see there, just adding in some more stonework and some cracks on the interior. And there we have it guys, our build is complete. This thing is ready to get painted. And it's time to start turning that styrofoam into wood, stucco, and stone. It's gonna be a lot of fun. My wizarding mug, it has a moon on the side and the stars. And that's it guys, now you know how to build a miniature house and add in all this great texture into your builds. Now in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to paint it, which is really what makes all these textures we just put into our build now really come to life. So I'm excited for that one. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification if you wanna stay up to date with all my videos and be notified when the next video in this series comes out. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, keep on crafting.